Hey and welcome back. Thanks for clicking on this video. Um, in this video, I try to make a fun little thing for PCB design. So it's really for beginners, um, A to Z. So I chose a letter of the alphabet. I chose all the letters of the alphabet. Um, so A will mean something, B will mean something. So this video is just A to Z of our PCB design with every letter meaning something. So it's really for beginners, just so you know about the concepts and how to do small things in the PCB design. So let me know what you guys think about it. I'll make more videos like this. I can definitely think about more stuff that will go with more letters. So yeah, guys, So at the bottom, you can just click through what letter you want to know more about. Uh, I'll add bookmark, bookmarks and so enjoy, guys. Like we have, you can always take your old schematics and use it. So you just file a pen schematic, choose a design you have done before. So if we just go uh, STM32, there we go. So I just took a schematic from a previous project and brought it to a new project I'm busy with. So I don't need to redraw anything. So A is for add or append. B is for board outline. So the board, what a board outline basically is, is we tell the PCB how the shape should be, what the dimension should be, and how my PCB should look. So in this example, we use a layer called edge cuts and we place lines. So we go place line or at the right here, we can just place line here. So what we do is we just go to the zero line, keep in control, keep it straight. And we can make a line like this and we'll make another line like this. And we just build ourselves a square. So the board outline can be any shape you would actually like, any shape in the 2D dimension. So it can be circles, it can be triangles. You can see I'm a bit off at the moment, so I can just click on it and move it. And there we go. So the perfect thing to make sure is that all the lines are connected. So we can just say place again. And then when you push Alt 3, you can see the outline is perfect to what we just made. Just to show you the effect, so if I delete, then it looks like this. So B is for board outline. C is for copper, so for copper tracks, copper pores, anything related to copper. So copper is the basic substance used to connect all your tracks together for electrical connections. So to do that, you just click root, single track or differential pair. Uh, we'll speak about differential later. Or on the right hand side, you can just click on this. So once we click here, we can just click what we want to connect. Once you click, it will highlight where to connect it, which is pretty amazing. So now you just play connect the dots. When routing, make sure you've got no acute angles. Always try to keep 45 degrees. Or if it's like this, you can use teardrops, which we'll speak about later. So that is copper traces. Just make sure when you route, make sure there's no 90 degrees, no acute angles. Always try to keep it 45 degrees. Uh, good practices like that. Uh, copper pores is basically a layer we throw over the whole top or bottom of the board that will be connected. So to do that, just on the right hand side here, you can see add filled zones and we just pour. So you can choose top copper and what it's going to be. So I always prefer to have my top copper as a supply. So in this case, I'll have VBAT and then I'll just make a rectangle, a square, sorry. And that is a copper pore. So I do the same for the bottom. And the bottom I always make ground. So the top you want to supply voltage and the bottom you want ground. It's just good practice. And 
there we go so you can click the button left here uh, show it full zones or don't show it so it's sometimes easier to root when you don't show it but you can see there so to repo your copper pores you can just go design rules and once you run this it will repo your copper so you can see we said VBAT must be our top layer and you can see wherever there's VBAT it's connected and wherever there's not it's not uh, just so you know the tracks will always cut your planes so you can see it's not the inside here it's only on the outside so D is for design rules uh, we have a special video on design rules uh, more in detail but this part I'm just going to sh quickly show you how to get to design rules and how to implement it so to get to design rules you just go top left here board setup and then you add a design rule by pushing this button let's say V bat width and I change the width to 0.5 it's important to remember to add this at the bottom right here so I want my V bat to add the rule of V bat width so it'll have this rule okay so if I go to V bat and I just delete this and I make a line you can see it's thicker than the rest if I do ground that should be nice and thin so that is how you do design rule E is for edit so there's always times where you need to edit components edit tracks so how do we do that in the schematic all you have to do is always double click and you'll be able to open the properties window here you can change uh, attributes like your reference your values your footprint even add a data sheet if you want or you can always highlight something and push E E is also for properties in your PCB it's the same so if I want to edit this track just double click on it I can tr change the width I can change which layer it's on I can even change which net it's part of or I can just highlight it and push E same for components if I want to change the footprint I can just double click on it and the properties will open and here you can see all the options I'll go in more details in another video about footprints so E is for edit and to edit in, in KiCad you press E F is for fiducial so fiducials are components that we place on our board that the PCB manufacturer uses to place your components on the board so what I mean by that is not the PCB producing itself but when they use a pick and place machine to place your components on the board and then solder it for you so fiducials are not required if you're going to hand solder your own components so to place a fiducial we use footprint and place a fiducial so a board should always have a minimum of two fiducials top left and top right so your PCB manufacturer who places your components on the board for you will use this as a reference so the machine will look where my fiducial is and where my components are with respect to my fiducial this makes it easier for the manufacturer to pick and place your machines again if you're going to hand solder components fiducials are not necessary so F is for fiducial G is for Gerbers so we do have another video fully focusing on Gerbers and making Gerbers for a manufacturer to produce your PCB I'll put the link below or a video should pop up here somewhere top right top left who knows uh, so to make Gerbers you use a plot function the plot is on the left here push plot and then you want to make sure that you make the Gerbers of these layers for the manufacturer so all you do is push plot uh, it will ask you to refill your zones if it's out of date and we also need to generate the dr drill holes for the manufacturing and all you do is push generate just make sure your settings are the same as this generate so your Gerbers will always be saved in the folder of your project so my battery charging folder and here you can see all the Gerbers so all you do is right click and zip this together and send this or give this to the manufacturer and they will be able to produce your board for you so G is for Gerber H is for holes so sometimes your PCB might need holes for mounting purposes so there are two ways of making holes in KiCad first way is you can actually place a component or part called holes so if you go holes here it will give you different 
different diameters, mounting holes, 2.2, 2.3, 2.2. So these are normal generic screws that you'll get. That's a massive one. But you can also just make a hole yourself. To do this, you can just create a circle. Make sure it's on the edge cut layer. I'll out E for edit. Edge cut. So if we make it a, a radius of 1.5, so 3 diameter, we push Alt 3. So once you create the circle and make sure it's on the edge layer, if you push Alt 3, you can see there's a hole there. So there's two different ways of making holes in KiCad. H is for holes. I is for images. What a lot of people don't know is actually you can put images inside your schematic. What I use it for normally is if I've got a schematic or a circuit I'm copying from the internet, I sometimes put the image of the circuit inside to always have a reference. To put an image in, at the bottom right here you go add bitmap image, click and then go to where it is saved. There we go. And there is your image. So for the future you'll always have some sort of reference knowing where you got the schematic from. You don't have to go look for the data sheet. It just makes life easier sometimes. So I is for image. J is just do it. Like the Nike slogan, uh, my biggest advice for anyone doing PCB design is just get started. The more you do it, the more you struggle, the more you'll learn and you'll meet people on your way that will be able to help you. So don't be scared, just download KiCad, start a new project, get someone, someone's project as a reference and just start making a PCB. So J is for just do it. A is for keep out. So there might be times where you want to make sure that there's no tracks running through a specific part of your board. This might be for a tenor design, high speed design, etc. To do this, we make use of the keep out areas in KiCad. So all you do is push this button on the right and then place where you don't want any tracks or vibes. So I'll, for example, I want this space and I just place a square here. Double click. And now you'll see when I want to place a track, I cannot place a track through this region. So this is very useful for high speed designs or just to make sure that you don't have any tracks anywhere in the specific area for some reason. So let's say I don't want anything underneath my component here. I can't root, impossible. So sometimes under IC as well, you don't want any routing. So K is for keep out. L is for layers. So layers are basically what makes up a PCB. A PCB is built up by different layers. Um, on the right hand side in KiCad, you'll see the different layers that is accessible to you in KiCad. So you get the coppers, which is the front and back coppers. That is the tracks we spoke about earlier. Um, Adhesive is not important now. I'll get to that later. Based um, Silk is important. So silk is the top uh, layer text that you'll be able to see on the PCB. So the white parts here are called the silk. Uh, also front, back. Your mask is the opening so you can solder your uh, components also front and back so you can see all the components has a mask layer which allows the pads to be exposed for your components to be soldered onto and then edge cuts we spoke about is the outer board line layer and then the fabrication front and back is used by the manufacturer but I'll not go too much detail now so these are all the layers that you get on the PCB and what they stand for uh, you get, you can go to four layers, six layers, twelve layers boards for signals. We'll do a special video about that. So L is for layers. M is for mechanical. Sometimes you'll see that a footprint will always sometimes not have a step file or a 3D body. So we, it's always nice to have the mechanical structure on the PCB to give it a real life feel to it. So. To give a mechanical structure, we import a step file. To do that, you double click on the component, use this button, and then go to the place where your footprint step file is saved. So once you found it, you can just double click on your step file, import it, and then rotate it 
with respect to its position to make it fit nicely. We do have a video of how to import a step file. Please, if you want to have a good look, just go. I'll try to post the video somewhere here, left, right, center, and then go watch it. There we go. You can move your step file, your mechanical structure around, and now it should be there. So M is for mechanical. So N is for new project. So how do I start a new project in KiCad? I want to get to the home screen, which is this, and then go file, new, new project. So I can either start a blank new project, or I can start a project template. So here we can choose a specific template we want to use, be it Arduino Uno, Arduino Mini. I've made a long video about this that I will share. So to start a new project, all you have to do is file, new project, and then save it in a specific place that you are, know where it is. So you don't have to look for it. So test one, uh, I'll save these changes and then a new project will open. A project consists of a PCB and a schematic. So N is for new project. O is for overlay. Overlay is another term you'll hear many times in PCB design. Overlay actually means a similar or the same as source screen. So the text you'll see here is actually called overlay as well. So just so you know, overlay and source screen is exactly the same. So O is for overlay. B is for place component. So this is done in two different ways on the PCB and the schematic. So in the PCB, you can just push O and click on it, and then you'll be able to place a footprint of the component, or you can go place footprint. As you can see, O is the shortcut key. So once you do that, you can choose a component, let's say MSB um, at Mega. So there's, we got different chips here, so we can do anything. So remember, this is the footprint. It's not the component itself. So then you can place there. On the schematic side, to place the component, you push A for Apple. Or you can go place symbol you see a so here we can go uh, let's go for at mega so that's the chip on the Arduino Nano R is for rotate and there we place a component so if you double click on it you can see the footprint already be here so we don't need to place a footprint on the PCB it will automatically go over so to place component in the schematic is A and in the PCB is O. So P is for place component. Q is for questions. So you might have many questions while designing your own PCB board. And KiCad, because it's open source, the community is quite big. If you have any questions, you can always go to forum.kiCad.info and you'll see there's many people who've asked many different questions. You can also just pop us a message and we'll try to help where we can. You can find us, our links below, our Instagram, our Facebook, YouTube, wherever. So send us a message. We can, we'll try to help if we, if we can. Uh, you can also ask the great community of KiCad on this website. Also feel welcome to just join our Discord channel where you guys can ask any questions to any people. Uh, yeah, so Q is for questions. R is for rat nests. So that's a common word you'll hear in PCB design. So rack nest is these white lines you see while I'm deleting the tracks. So it is just a way for the program to tell you what is disconnected. So you can see this ground and that ground is disconnected, this view bus. So this white line here is called a rat's nest. So if I delete all this, global deletion, you can see all these white lines and this is called rat's nests. So R is for rat's nests. S is for terms we use quite regularly in PCB design called soul screen and solder mask. So soul screen is the text that you can see on here on the PCB. So soul screen is the white you see. It's literally the text that the PCB manufacturer can put on for you so you as a human can read it. And solder mask is the covering of the PCB. So the PCB is made of copper, so 
they first have a copper layer exposed and then they put a solder mask over the top. So a solder mask can be uh, your generic green, black, white, all different colors. So S is for solder mask and solder screen. Solder screen is your text and solder mask is the black you can see, uh, this layer here that's covering the copper, protecting the copper and for durability. T is for text. It might sound silly, but text is probably one of the most important parts of PCB design. Uh, it's very helpful to indicate exactly what is situated where on your PCB. Like we use designators as text to know where our diodes are, where our resistors are. Uh, also things we add like what circuit this is. This is a battery circuit. So the most common place for text is on your silk, your front silk or back silk. Silk is what you'll see in real life. So all the white you see here is silk. But text can also be on different layers. Let's say the fabrication or the front. You'll put text here that you don't want other people to see in real life. It's just notes for you to know with this design what's important. So to place a text, you go to the right hand side here. And then you can place a text. So you can, uh, this is a reminder to not have 90 degree bends. So then I will have a reminder always. People won't see this, but at least I will see it. Text is also very important for the schematic. Text here can give you indication what your circuit actually does, uh, special calculations. So in a year's time, when you come back to your circuit, you'll know exactly what you did. To place the text, also you're on the right hand side, place text. Also, uh, So for this circuit, I will remember that if I want to change the current of the charging of the battery, I'll change R2 and that will control the current. So T is for text, U is for unconnected or unrooted nets or tracks. But this I mean is when you've done a complex design or just a normal design, a piece of design, you always need to double check has all your nets, has all your tracks been rooted as your schematic. To check this, you can do it by eye, but that gets difficult. So KiCad has a tool called Design Rule Checker. Once you click on this, you can say Run and Unconnected Items. And then you'll see all the places where you have not rooted fully. So you can see my stat is disconnected. So we need to connect that. And my ground is not connected. So this will tell us if we have any unconnected nets or tracks. So if we do this again, you can see it's zero. So U is for unconnected tracks or nets. V is for bias or bias, depending where you are in the world and how you pronounce it. So bias are normally like magic portals from the top layer to the bottom layer of a PCB for signals. So signal routed at the top can go to the bottom of the board by means of a via. So what I mean by that is if I would like my V bus to go up here from here, I can also go from top to bottom. So if I place a line V bus and I place a via here on the right hand side, add vias, I can go from the bottom layer, make sure you click on the bottom layer on the layers. From here, I can go all the way now. I'm on the bottom layer to the top over here. Add another via for magic portal. Again, choose the layer, and then you can do that. So I went from the top, which is my red, through a via to the bottom, which is my green back to the top through a via top. So vias are connection between your top layer and your bottom layer of your signal. V is for vias. W is for wire. So we use wires in our schematic to connect different components to each other or to different sources of power or ground. So to place a wire, we push W and you can see a green wire pops up and we can just connect it where we would like it to be. So V bet to or we can go place wire and connect. 
So the Y is the connection between components, between powers, between each other's signals. The Y is basically your signal. So this is very important for a schematic because the wires you place on a schematic will become the tracks of your PCB. So that's very important. Wires on your schematic becomes the tracks of your PCB. W is for wire. X is for XART. So what XART is basically, when you send your files to PCB manufacturing, they can put it in what is called a panel. A panel can be seen on the right hand side here. So your PCB is made out of, is copied over a certain amount of times in a panel by X, X and Y. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. This is five by four PCBs. So when the manufacturer asks you, is X out allowed? That means are they allowed to produce a panel of your PCB with PCBs inside the panel that are not functional, that mistakes are on. This is cheaper uh, than saying no X out, but you, so if you order 20 PCBs, there's chances that only 18 will work. So that is X out. So when the PCB manufacturer asks you, do you want X out? Now you know what that means is do you accept failures in your PCB? Um, so X is for X outs. Y is, why do I want to become a PCB designer? Why do I want to make a PCB? So this is just a fun one for you guys. So I would like to know in the comments, if you got this far in the video, thanks a lot for watching. So why have you decided to make a PCB? What do you find so interesting? Uh, let me know in the comments and uh, let's just start a conversation. I'm quite interested. How you guys find it? How you guys find this channel, and what made you decide that you wanted to take this awesome adventure of making your own PCB? Z or Z is for the zero position. So by the zero position, I mean a point of your PCB that your components has a reference for. This is important when you start giving pick and place files to manufacturer. I will get to pick and place files later. Um, so. Rule of thumb is to always make your zero position the bottom left of your PCB. To do that, you go to place, you have drill and place offset, which is your pick and place zero position. It's that red over there. So, so you go place, drill and place offset, and you click where you want it. Boom. So we want it there. And then you also place grid origin and you put it there. So when you generate the fabrication output footprint position, then all your footprints will be a positive uh, coordinate. So it will be positive X and positive Y. So rule of thumb is to always have your zero position bottom left of your PCB. So Z is for zero position. Thanks for making it to the end, guys, um, or skipping to the end. It doesn't matter. You got to this part of the video. I know it's a long one, but I try to break it up into manageable, manageable bite sizes. So let me know what you guys think about this format. Should I make more A to Z um, going maybe high in, in difficulties folk or, and then later focusing on each one separately in a separate video? Uh, let me know. But I guess um, if you haven't watched the whole thing, number, number, number Y, letter Y, um, why is why did you start with PC design? How did you guys find about us? Um, what do you find so interesting about PC design? Let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, and ask me questions. We're always willing to help. Guys, have a fantastic week. Um, enjoy your designing. Enjoy your learning. Uh, until next time. Bye.